I'm Matt Bichard with REIT.com, and I'm here in Hollywood, Florida for REITWISE 2012, a REIT's Law, Accounting, and Finance Conference. Joining me today is Barchan Zoltmulder, tax partner with Loyans & Lof. And now, you participated here at, at REITWISE in a session on tax planning for U.S. REITs investing abroad. Has it become easier or more efficient for U.S. REITs to invest abroad? Well, one thing I can say is that definitely uh, investing abroad uh, has not been on the agenda of a lot of REITs for a while, I think, due to the economic uh, situation. But it uh, seems to be back on the agenda. And what we see is that um, U.S. REITs, um, when investing in Europe, they are looking basically for an investment platform from which they can uh, hold uh, their properties in various countries. So has it become easier? To a certain extent, I would say. The European laws have become uh, much more integrated. So Europe on a tax uh, basis, you can move around your, your cash within Europe in principle on a tax-free manner. But on the other hand, I must also say that uh, more countries uh, due to budget constraints have also become much more aggressive, I would say, on uh, looking at substance, for example. So you cannot simply set up holding structures or exit structures anymore without also looking at um, moving over, let's say, people uh, who are actually managing the, uh, not only the properties, but really the structure. And what are the major tax impediments to investing abroad and what countries present uh, the biggest obstacles? Well, I think one thing that uh, REIT should keep in mind is that uh, even though they have an exempt status in the U.S., it doesn't mean that they have an exempt status in Europe. So when you invest in a European country, you will be subjected to tax in each country where you're investing. So the way to go about is to, first of all, try to find uh, a way how to get your money back to the U.S. without paying any withholding taxes, because, of course, that's a big tax burden. But also in respect of the local taxation, you try to find a way to reduce your actual tax burden as much as possible. So you're looking at leverage structures, you're looking at depreciation schemes, you're looking at uh, on exits, for example, on how to avoid transfer taxes on exits. Uh, if you do, do share deals, you have to uh, consider whether or not uh, you have a capital gains tax on the sale of shares in a property-rich company. Typically you do, so you need treaty protection. So there's a whole bunch of things that you have to worry about if you invest uh, abroad. And how much of a logistical challenge does planning and managing for foreign currency gains or, or losses present? Uh, it is uh, something definitely to worry about. So you see companies who are swapping their currencies. Of course, you try to um, have your uh, financing as much as possible in the local currency, at least in the currency of where the, the real estate is, uh, is based. Uh, that at least hedges uh, in a natural way uh, your risks. But uh, then again, if you have to bring it back to the U.S., that's an issue. Now, uh, until a couple of years ago, this foreign exchange rate uh, differential was an issue also from a U.S. perspective on whether it was good or bad income. Now, fortunately, through the lobby of NARIT, it has been solved. Well, thank you so much for uh, shedding a little light on this subject. Okay. For more on this and other news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com.